Hi guys, so if you have followed our channel for a while, you probably remember that we always used to have this dense canopy of potters plants over our fish tank. As you can see, it's no longer the case. So what has happened? Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, approximately a month ago, we have decided to move this display tank from our uh, living room into this smaller room because it's warmer and also it's closer to this large window. So for potters plants, there will be more daylight and it's winter now and it's Scotland. So there's not much sun, there's not much daylight. And in our living room, uh, quite a lot of these potters plants, they were actually not really thriving. They were not dying, but they were not thriving either because of the lack of light. So the idea was that there is a lot of light in this room and it's warmer, better for discus. So that's why we moved uh, this fish tank. And uh, here's a link to the video uh, where I show how we moved uh, all the fish tanks around our flat. Approximately, well, I've, I've tried to, to make this move as a uh, as unstressful for the fish as possible because we have here a group of wild discos and uh, it took me about uh, two days to empty this tank to wash everything uh, to move uh, parts of these tanks because uh, it has a sump and uh, during that time the fish they were uh, living in a smaller holding tank which to be honest wasn't really great for them and there's quite a lot of them so uh, a few days after i moved them to this tank i noticed that uh, two or three of them have uh, this long white uh, poop uh, which is a sign that they have some kind of intestinal parasites or intestinal worms most likely that was uh, hexameter or uh, hex and uh, it's been ages since I've had, not me, my fish had uh, hexameter, so I was a bit uh, surprised, but most likely it happened because of the stress that they have sustained during this moving procedure, because I had to uh, catch them, put them into smaller tank, two days later I had to catch them again, and then uh, they're quite sensitive because they're wild fish, so they're not uh, taking uh, this kind of uh, things easy, easily. So I've started treating them for in intestinal parasites. And I've started uh, with uh, this product, uh, Warmer Plus. I think if you are in the UK, uh, this is something that you're quite possibly would be able to buy and uh, it used to be quite popular a few years ago. It's um, a flubendazole based product. So I usually use it for routine uh, deworming, so I, I deworm my discus about once per month or something like that, uh, just to make sure that they don't have any intestinal parasites, uh, but apparently they didn't have intestinal parasites, so I, I didn't know whether this uh, product works or not. But after I used it for a, a few days, I realized that not only it doesn't work, but actually uh, before there were only two or three fish with uh, a long white poop, but after using this product uh, there were possibly like uh, eight of them were already uh, pooping uh, with white poop and after a few days uh, most of the fish actually stopped feeding and I could see that uh, the disease is deteriorating and this thing doesn't help. So I bought um, uh, this one, this is a, a Kisuri I think warmer uh, it's based also on flubendazole. I didn't expect much of a difference, but it, it's really hard to find any metro-based or metronidazole-based product in the UK. So I've decided to try this f as a change. Well, of course, also this thing did not help at all. Things were just getting worse and all of the discos, they've stopped feeding. They were uh, really stressful and it, it clearly didn't work. So I bought uh, this thing. This is a Pratsequantel based product, so it's based on a different medicine and it's designed uh, to deal with tapeworms and uh, flukes, including skin and uh, gill flukes. So it, it's a different product, I was hoping that it will work and I have used it for about a week and I noticed that th there was no effect at all, so I stopped using this as well. Uh, the problem here in the UK is that it's really hard, almost impossible to find um, any uh, intestinal worm treatment uh, medicine that's based on metro or metronidazole. In North America or in Asia, you guys certainly have no such problems. You have uh, free or easy access to metronidazole based medicines, but it's different here. So I had to order this metroplex, Sikem metroplex from the United States and I had to wait fortunately only for about a week to receive this thing. So I've used um, uh, 
this medicine uh, for just a week. I administered it, um, and I think twice over one week. And during that time, I've also raised the temperature to 35 degrees Celsius. Uh, so the tank was at 35 degrees Celsius for one week with using this medicine. And after I've done a water change, miraculously all the fish were healthy. So the disease has gone. Most likely it was a hexameter or hex because Metro works perfectly against hex. And uh, this product has helped just amazingly. And uh, the fish started feeding. They don't have any... Uh, long white poop anymore and uh, they're perfectly healthy now. So on the positive side all the discos have recovered relatively fast. On the negative side either uh, raising the temperature to 35 degrees Celsius or using so many different medications have had really bad effect on uh, the potos plants. So they've gone yellow and then the roots started uh, rotting and falling apart and within literally two or three days I've lost uh, I would say 90% of these potos plants they were just gone in a second they became really soft and kind of mushy and this is a feeling that you get when the plant is basically dead so I had to throw them away all of them uh, the only potos that has survived interestingly is golden potos that piece over there and uh, some of the marble potos actually also survived uh, just literally like one uh, one of these marble potos plants has survived the rest of the potos were gone uh, Yeah, so this is a, a sad development considering that we moved this tank here Mostly because of potos so that they would have enough light from the window But yeah, that's a fortune, but the most important thing is that the fish are healthy and in case of potos um, Well, I basically started growing all that canopy with just one small pot of potos Which I bought at the local uh, flower shop. So I'm pretty sure that whatever is left here over the next half a year and certainly over the next one year will develop into a similarly sized canopy so with potos it's just about patience and it's you just need to take your time and they will grow back eventually when you're watching this tank right now you can see that there are lots of s small tetras in here there's also a java moss on top of the driftwood i didn't have any of that when i was treating them for hex uh, there were just discus in this tank all the smaller fish they will not be able to tolerate these higher temperatures and I don't think Java moss can hold it as well so I've added this fish later on just because discus was still very shy and um, uh, they were hiding most of the time also they were stressed out by the disease uh, of course but they were very shy um, in this new setup so I've added these tetras to get them to come out and it actually works wonders because when there are smaller fish they feel more confident they see that the smaller fish swim around so they can come out as well and now uh, they're swimming all over the tank and um, they're feeding well so uh, that has helped as well so I know that m many of you will think that this tank looks now really ugly without all the potos on top and I certainly agree but uh, there are two lessons that I've learned first First is that uh, uh, you really need to use a metro based uh, products to treat hex or to treat intestinal parasites in discus because flubendazole or pransequantel based products are not very efficient and in my case they didn't work at all if they were like it's like I, I haven't used anything. The other lesson that I've learned is that potos plants possibly most likely cannot withstand high temperatures so uh, if you plan on treating your fish with uh, heat or using so-called heat treatment uh, be careful because you can lose your riparian plants and uh, this is basically what happened with me and I've been keeping fish for more than 20 years and uh, these are still new things for me and new things that I learned in the hobby so I hope you found this video useful and leave your comments in the comment section I will see you soon